All right, everyone, welcome back again, to, uh, continuing our polygon units. Uh, we're going to talk about perimeter today, and we are going to pick on one particular shape in particular, but we can use the concepts to other polygons. So um, just to warm us up, what is the perimeter of this quadrilateral? How would you deal with knowing what the perimeter is? And if you don't remember what perimeter is, that's a fancy way of saying, what is the distance around an object? Okay, so for any polygon, we find the perimeter by adding the side lengths. And you might remember this from previous years. We just take all the numbers and add them up. So here I'm starting at 38 millimeters, adding 21, 62, plus 9, plus 27, plus 6. Add them all up. I could say the perimeter of this hexagon, it's, not, it's any regular hexagon, but a hexagon nonetheless, is 163 millimeters. But there's some quicker ways of doing this, and we, and when you get older into high school math, you'll you'll see the benefit of doing this. We can calculate the, you know, we could find and calculate perimeter using rules um, with polygons, and we're going to pick on parallelograms a bit today. And parallelogram, if you don't know, it's a rectangle or a square that's just kind of been pushed over, so it's kind of exactly the same. So all the sides are parallel, so we call it a parallelogram. And so knowing what a parallelogram is, and a rectangle and squares are par parallelograms, uh, we have two sides that are congruent and two sides that are congruent. So we say we have two pairs of congruent sides. And let's talk about our rules for uh, finding the perimeter of a parallelogram. So we have two long sides and two short sides. And if we add the measures of just the lo one long side and one short side, we could multiply that just by two. So. We use, we use variables here, and so I'll just really get into this perimeter. We could say is in brackets, longer side plus shorter side times two, because there's two of them of each, and these variables. Now, um, we quite often use italics, um, you know, slanty letters in math. We use letters, maybe just not to get them mixed up, mixed up with the numbers. So the capital P is gonna represent perimeter. The handwritten L, represents the longer side and the small s represents the shorter side. And we would write P equals bracket L plus S times two. Now, why why are we doing this weird L? And sometimes you'll see it like this. Well, if I just did this, what are we gonna get mixed up with? Probably the number one, right? Um, just similar like we were talking about using the letter X as a variable. Um, you know, remember we had in previous units like 2s. Well, I know this means multiply. We don't put the x there because it looks like an x for multiplication. So just to help us not get confused, um, I'll be using, I mean, I was taught to do this, but if you want to do this, that's fine too. Here's a different parallelogram and here's a different rule. Uh, we can multiply the longer side by 2 and multiply the shorter side by 2 and then add them together. So perimeter equals 2 times longer side plus 2 times shorter side. And all in the end, we'd have 2L plus 2S. So this is your formula there. Now, I quite often say Mr. Hardy recommends. Mr. Hardy actually recommends this formula over the other one. Just because it's a little bit cleaner, there's no multiplication sign to get us mixed up with other variables. And trust me, when you get to high school math, you'll get confused with all the variables. So it's just easier to, to make it a little bit cleaner that way. So P equals 2L plus 2S. So here we go. I have two different formulas and we can choose either one. So I'm gonna, let's solve this parallel, you know, the perimeter of this parallelogram. And we have kilometers this time. And that's a really big, maybe it's a park or something. It's a really big park, but let's solve it. Um, so let's just substitute our numbers for our variables. So the first one was P equals um, L, sorry, this should be a plus sign. L plus S times two. And the other one was P equals two L plus two S. Okay, let's do some substitution here. So we don't know the perimeter, we're, we're trying to figure out. Well, L is 11 kilometers, so 11 plus, and the other side was six times two. And here we have P equals two times 11 plus two times six. And if you remember our order of operations, 
we always do multiplications first, but in the, in the first um, formula, we're doing brackets first. So P equals 17 times two, which we lovingly know as 34. And here we have P equals 22 plus 12, which again is 34. So perimeter, P equals 34 kilometers. Um, if you're my student, you would not get it right if you just put 34. We always add the units. I'm gonna get you to try this. Now I'm throwing you a curveball on, on the polygon B, but um, maybe you could figure out your own little rule there. But what is the perimeter of these polygons using the formulas uh, that we just learned? Okay, so let's do A first, and uh, I'm gonna honestly I'm gonna do my recommended way, and that's the 2L plus 2S, and always start with the formula. Like you might know what you're gonna do, but always start with the formula, write it in your notebook, and then substitute it. I'm gonna trust me, it helps you keep things a little bit more organized. So P equals, what's the long side? Looks like eight. Okay, it's not the top side always. It's eight in this, so two times eight plus, and maybe I'll put it in brackets just to make it cleaner, plus um, two times four. So P, I'm showing my work here, equals 16 plus eight, that's 24. Is that correct? No, we gotta put the unit millimeters, okay? Now this this uh, hexagon here, it's a it's an irregular hexagon. Uh, I did it on purpose because I wanted to see could you create your own formula for this. Okay. Now the trick is looking at the hatch marks. There's hatch marks indicating congruent sides. Take a few seconds, figure out what could be a formula here. All right, there's no set formula for this, but we could. Well, I notice that there's one, two, three, four hatch marks that are the same, and they are one meter. And then we have these two hatch marks. There's double hatch marks, which indicate that this is the same four. So how, hmm, what can we do here? Well, there's four, so maybe perimeter could be four S. Well, maybe we'll call this side S, the one meter side, um, plus two L. We could do that, right? So perimeter equals four times one plus two times four. And that would be four plus eight equals 12 meters. Now, the old fashioned way would to be add these all up. And, and again, it's a little bit quicker with multiplication because um, we're not carrying, you know, I could, I could have written four plus four plus one plus one plus one plus one. And you might say to yourself, well, I can do that in my head really fast. Well, yeah, but what if I'm giving you like 12.6 and 3.785? Um, it's not as quick, right? So the traditional method, well, is this, that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that is 12. Oh, happy day, I made it. But um, using the formula is a little bit quicker. And so find your own rules, um, parallelograms, and you know rectangle squares kind of thing. We, we, it's pretty pretty standard. Um, but if you're getting strange shapes like this irregular hexagon, you might have to make your own rules up just to make it a little bit quicker. All right, there you go. There you have it. In life, math happens. Take care.